Hi friends, Nick here from Technology Lowdown. Today we are migrating UNMS to a new server. Now the UNMS installation that I run, I currently run it on Ubuntu um, 19, uh, sorry, 18.04 LTS and it's running with a GUI. Now the reason it's running with a GUI is because I haven't used UNMS before and I wanted to make sure I knew how the software worked before I chucked in an environment without a GUI, which I prefer to work in, especially when I'm uh, sorting things out and getting it to work correctly. So today what we're doing is we're migrating it to a new server without a GUI and it'll be Ubuntu 18.04 LTS without a GUI which is the server operating system and then we are going to be installing UNMS on there and then importing our backups and making sure that all the equipment which is monitored is transferred over correctly. Now to do this Ubiquity have a tool built into UNMS we will be looking at this one today and I'll also be showing you how I've got the prox, um, uh, the hypervisor set up in Proxmox. So stay tuned if you would like to see how this uh, is done. All right, so the first thing we need to do is create a new uh, hypervisor within our Proxmox environment. So to do that, we just need to go over here and create a VM. And we are going to uh, assign it a node, which we've got one right here. Um, the VM ID, that's fine. We can leave that as default. I'll give it a name, UNMS and we will assign it the resource pool, there is only one. Um, the OS, um, so we will select an ISO. I've already uploaded a Ubuntu server to this uh, Proxmox installation. Um, now we just uh, we leave that as default, that should be fine. Next thing we need to set up the system, graphics card, we'll just leave that as default, that is fine. Um, SCSI, we can leave that as default as well. Now, uh, system requirements, they recommend uh, 16 gig of uh, storage space. Yeah, 16 gig of storage. So for simplicity's sake, I will um, assign, let's say, 20 gigabyte to it, or even maybe 24 gigabyte. That should be plenty. Uh, CPU, one is fine. It doesn't need any more than that, unless you've got a big installation, but um, just a single one would be more than adequate. So uh, memory, this is the important part. We need to make sure we assign at least two gig of memory because it does use a little bit and we can always play around with it from there. So uh, we need to create an interface for this as well. So I'm going to uh, assign it this interface here, just the local LAN, that is fine. And we can just use the default adapter there as well and we will just confirm those settings. Now that will create that new hypervisor just here. So before we go any further, I'll get this one started up. And we will get the server operating system installing. Okay, so that's booting straight to the disk right now. That's great. Okay, so let's select in language. It is English. Um, that's fine. All right, so we've uh, already picked up an IP address here. 1.4. Um, we'll just go done. So that's fine. I'll leave that as DHCP for now because I will set a static shortly. I just need to um, set up a... Uh, DHCP um, assignment so that it uh, receives the same IP address all the time and in the correct range. And we just go done here as well. I'm not using a proxy. Um, the Ubuntu Australia um, mirror is fine. We will use the entire disk. That's fine. And we'll click done and we shall continue. All right, server name, we will give it uh, UNMS. UNMS. And for the username, I'll set it up as this one. And I will give it a password as well. I'm going to install SSH server so I can connect to it.
Okay, if we need to install anything extra, we can do that now. Um, for the moment though, I don't think that we need to install anything. So we are just going to continue along. Okay, so that is starting to install. And it's chugging along nicely. That should be done in no time. Okay, so it looks like we are all done. We just need to reboot the system and we should be all done. So to install UNMS, we just need to follow along with this installation guide. And we've got a CURL command here, which will uh, grab this install script. And then it's going to run it as a bash file. All right, so that is done. Let's run a sudo apt dash get update. And we'll do a sudo apt dash get upgrade as well. Yes. Okay, so that's running through there nicely. That should hopefully not take too long. And I'm just going to copy this command and bring it over to here. And in fact, why don't we just SSH in because then I can just paste that one in very easily then. Um, so to grab your server's um, IP, you should probably check your router and then you can find out what uh, IP address it has picked up. Either that or you could just set a static IP address during the setup process. I've now set this as a dynamic address which is uh, always being assigned to this one, which is usually the way that I prefer to do it. Um, so I'm just going to log into here, local admin, and cool, okay, so that we're in. Now, I'm not actually sure if um, CURL is on here, so let's just see. Let's get. Uh, we'll go apt. Get um, CURL. Okay, so that's already installed. It's good, and I'll just paste that one in. So this is that uh, script from the Ubiquity website that I've copied to the clipboard. Now I'm just going to paste it and go enter. So now this will run through all the setup procedure for UNMS. Now this doesn't typically take very long. So we should have the new system up and running very shortly. Okay, so um, we've uh, come across this question now in the installation. Do we want to overcommit the memory? I'm just going to leave it as the, uh, yes here. Um, the recommendation there is to overcommit it, so that is what I've done there. Okay, so now it's uh, installing all of these um, updates that it has downloaded for this package. The great thing about this script from Ubiquity is that it doesn't seem to break. I've run it a couple of times on uh, a couple of different versions of Ubuntu and it seems to run through without ever faulting. So it's a very well done script. It does get the job done. Okay, so it looks like it's finished downloading all that it needed to do, and it's just uh, running through uh, creating the structure for UNMS. So we shouldn't be too far away now at all. No, it looks like it's all running now. So I should be able to just go to the web interface for it now. All right, so let's load up that uh, new install. 0 0.26 let's drag it over here all right so this is where we can probably jump back to our existing install and we'll just make sure we've got the latest backups so we'll go to settings and then we will go to backups and then we will uh, click on download for the backup, just at the top here, download backup. 
Now it does sometimes take a moment to generate this back up. Just going to jump back to here and see how it's going. Now when I've installed this before, it does sometimes sit on that screen, so I'm uh, interested in knowing. Uh, here's our download, so I'll save that on there. Interested in knowing if I load it up here, if it is going to actually come to the install page, which it has. So I'm just going to close that one there. And now we've got the uh, option of setting up UNMS. So look, I'm going to grab the details I have of my existing installation. All right, so put in a preferred username and password and your administrator email. All right, uh, we're setting up a host IP. And for this installation, I'm not going to be using Let's Encrypt as I'm only running it um, privately. All right, I agree to the conditions. And once you've got all your details in there, just click Next. Um, so for this, I'm going to use Gmail. So I'll block this part out so you don't see this. All right, so this is just processing that. Now we've got a new Vault key here. We shall download this one as well. And save a copy of that one. Now let's go into our application. Of course, we don't have a SSL certificate for this one. It's a self-generated one, which it is supplying. Um, but uh, since we know this isn't an internal solution, that is going to be satisfactory for um, the needs of this UNMS system I'm setting up. So we are in UNMS now. Um, we just need to click on this X here. And uh, we'll just close out of these ones for now. They're pretty much irrelevant because we are importing our existing backup. So I'm just in that uh, settings area down here in the lower left and we're just going to backups and we're going to restore the backup that we downloaded just before. So we're going to choose the file now and we'll go confirm downloads. Let's look for that latest file right here. All right, so that is um, uploading that one, and it should be verifying that one as well in the background. Okay, so while that's being restored, we are going to go back to the old installation of UNMS, and we're going to go to the devices page, because on here we've got the option of migrating. Now, U Ubiquity have a migration guide on their website um, uh, that speaks about this tool that they use. They recommend you have the second server running before following this guide and that you create a backup of our instance on the current install, which we have done. And we have just applied this backup. So we're not in the cloud environment, so we can skip that. Now on the second one, we need to start the migration. So on the first one, which is where I just was, we need to go to settings, devices, and migration. Turn the migration on and point it towards the new instance and uh, provide the details required. So I might just uh, load this one up in a new page and see where we are at. All right, looks like it's reloading now. All right, so those devices should all be imported now. I'm just going to put the password in. Okay, so it's detected we've got uh, 14 devices, four of which are apparently good. Um, so let's uh, jump back to our existing area and we are going to provide it with our new IP address, which is this one right here. And we will give it the port of uh, 443 and we will go apply changes. Now, uh, with this, it's only going to apply this new UNMS if it detects that the new server is up. Otherwise, there is this switch here called uh, force mode, 
and that force mode will apply these settings without the device first checking if the um, second server is online. So use that hesitantly as long as you're certain that it works. The only way I would recommend you do that is if you've got another device that you can use to test that it will work with those settings that you're going to be pushing to it using the migration tool. So for the moment, I'm not going to use that. I'm just going to click on uh, apply changes. All right, so I'll jump back to our new installation. Now what we should see is that our good devices start to appear as being online. So we have 14 devices there, all running, and their status is good. Let's go back to this page again, reload. And we should see that they are all running and we are back in the blue. All right, and I'm just going to go into one of these switches here and we can see that yes we do have some historic um, data here as well so it appears that this migration tool does import all of that information that we are after as well and if I go back to the existing installation I should be able to go back to the dashboard view and see that all those devices are offline so this server is now right to be switched off So look, there was one uh, small area I forgot to mention there. We need to restore the um, vault key. So to do that, we need to go back to UNMS on the new server, go down to settings, and then uh, credentials vault. And we just need to upload our vault key. Now, um, this is a file which you get with your original installation of UNMS. So I have now got that vault key in a text file, so I'm going to upload that key which I've got. Here it is. Now it says that it's been unlocked, so now that should mean if I go to a device, I'll just pause it here for a moment. So I've just confirmed there that now if I was to click on this key, it will show me the password of this device. So that vault key has applied successfully there. So that is the last step that you need to do with getting UNMS set up on a new server. That vault key from your original installation needs to be restored to the new installation of UNMS. Well, thanks for watching that video on moving UNMS to a new server. I hope it has been interesting for you and that you have learned something. Now, before I forget, I'll just show you what our current uh, VMware usage is. So if I, oh, sorry, Proxmox usage is. So I'll just jump on over to Proxmox there and I'll go to our existing installation here and uh, click on the summary page. And we can see that our uh, memory utilization is uh, down at 86% at the moment, so we've got uh, more headspace there, and our CPU is well and truly down as well there. So that is an improvement. So hopefully that video has been of uh, use to you, and if you would like to see more videos like this, please um, subscribe and tap the bell for notifications. If you like this video, click the like button and post your comments if you have any questions, and I'll be sure to get back to you. Thanks for watching. Bye.